everybody! Hey, something new on the channel of Parkside. First time we have a Parkside multimeter for review. Gonna be fun. The PDM 300 C2 for your cheaper pleasure. Let's take a look. I obtained this multimeter from a uh, seller down in the United States, but Little, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Little, Little, Little. Anyway, it's a German international discount retailer, and they have, get this, over 11,000 stores. Uh, around the globe, mostly in Europe, but apparently there's quite a few now um, in the United States as well. So unfortunately none here in Canada. Come on, little, where are you? But uh, yeah, suffice to say, this is one of those cheapos available at little. I guess you could say it's a little cheapo. That was bad, really bad. Get your proverbial manual now. This is, <laughs> I gotta tell you, I love it. This reminds me of uh, putting together Ikea furniture. I mean, doesn't it? Just like, look at the way it's done. It just looks like one of those Ikea manuals, but I mean, not, it's not a bad thing. Um, great pictures, really good pictures, actually. Very verbose. Um, I really like what they've done here. Excellent quality. Even comes with a nine volt max out battery. Wow, haven't seen one of those in a long time. And some pretty small test leads, CAT2 300 volts, so they're not going uh, crazy in the CAT department. Um, very realistic in terms of uh, electronics expectations here. Pretty small though, um, just your standard PVC fair, nothing fancy going on, no silicone or anything great like that. And hey, you also get a little screwdriver. Ah, seeing this more and more, I don't know why, but hey. Free is free. Going for approximately fifteen dollars uh, US or so, definitely uh, on the cheap side. Now, what do you get in terms of quality? Well, that's a good question. Qualitaten, as the Germans would say, I think. Um, well, first of all, you get that plastic body. You know, it's a little cheap feeling, yes, and it's a fake rubber boot. It's not a real rubber boot. It's just hard plastic so that's that's kind of a downer uh, you flip it over i don't know if you can see on camera or not but you do have four of these slightly raised edges here so at least it does take it even if it's a millimeter or so off the ground now that tilt stand well it's a little cheesy uh, it's smallish it doesn't really go with the height of the, the meter and it, it's hard to pull out at times but you know end of the day huh, at least it has the tilt stand Underneath the tilt stand, we do have the third party certification and CSA reading, which is always a bonus. Plus, that actually gives us our two fuse sizes with the volt rating and everything. So, that's nice to have that uh, verbosity on the outside of the case. That's what I like to call G.I. Joe Green. God, I love it. I really do. I think the color is cool. But, you know, that's one of these colors where you're either going to love it or absolutely abhor it. Um, I like it. I think it looks good. It looks like a multimeter. And uh, for me, it works. Here we go with a closer look at that selector switch starting off at the nine o'clock or off position, followed by volts, DC. AC volts up to 300 volts. Resistance up to 20 mega ohm. Continuity. Dial Signal test. out generator. Microamps, AC, DC. Milliamps, AC, DC. Finally, high current amps up to 10 amps, AC, DC. And your secondary off position. At the top of the meter on the far left, we have our select button. Now, apparently this can also double as a data logger. Uh, there is some hack out there, apparently. Uh, I'm not going there, but uh, yeah, so that might have multiple features as well. On the far right, we also have our standard one-touch hold. At the bottom left of the meter, we have our high current 10 amp input. In the middle, we have our common or ground. And on the far right, we have our signal out as well as the voltage resistance diode continuity and milliamps. When you turn the meter on, there you are greeted with that three and a half digit LCD display with a max indication of 1,999. Okay, let's just say 2,000 counts and be done with it. Uh, our measuring rate with this multimeter is approximately two to three measurements per second. Um, so yeah, it's not the fastest out there, but you know, it's a cheapie and it looks okay. It does have a little bit of glare, but uh, it's your basic LCD screen. Digits are a good size though. So you know what? Backlight definitely would have been nice. But um, yeah, it's not bad. Now when you switch ranges, you have that kind of beepity beep going on, but you do hit that range with authority. It's got that nice clickety clack. You know, I love that sound. I like it. It's a really decent selector switch. Input jacks are in there nice and snug, tight, tight, like a bug in a rug. Yeah, that sucker is not going anywhere like that. Nice DC precision voltage test, 5.01 volts coming up. 
5.00 is what we wanted to see. Hey, that's pretty close. Looks good. Already taking a little trip down memory lane with this old power supply. Haven't taken out in about five years, but look at it still going strong. Okay, here we go. Sitting at just under a volt, around 0.8 of a volt. And yeah, both the fluke and the park side are kind of figure, trying to figure out, but look at that, they're pretty well in unison. Fluke 113 on the right, an auto ranging. Uh, it's kind of a smart meter in its own sense. And the park side on the left, of course. Okay, here we go. Taking it up, up to a whopping 7.2 volts. 7.27 for the park side, 7.27-ish for the fluke. Wow, that's unison. Okay, here we go, higher. Let's sit at 10.2 volts. 10.28 for the park side or 10.27 and 10.26, five for the fluke. So wow, they are really neck and neck here. Up and away, 17.2 volts. 17.32 and 17.31 respectively. Oh, so close. Let's max it out, here we go. Up and away. 31.78 according to the DC power supply. 31.91 for the fluke with that nice high voltage annunciator. 31.9 as well for the park side. No high voltage annunciator. And there you go. So, wow. Hey, what can I say? $15 compared to 150 bucks. I gotta say, it did quite well. Hey everybody, it's that time again. It's time for another. <laughs> Yeah, this is when we get to scream about something that just drives us crazy in the world of multimeters. And believe me, there's lots. This week's event, well, it's a personal one, a peep of mine that I just can't help. It's mushy selector switches. Ooh, what is that? Oh, yuck. What happened to the awesome clickety click, clackety clack? Oh, nothing. It's like, it's like, ooh, it's just like ooze. I don't like it. What were they thinking? Oh, yeesh. A good selector switch is definitely going to hit those ranges with authority. You know when you're on a range, because you hear it. And it's not just cheap multimeters either. Ooh, sounds like a ladder in Siberia. Properly designed selector switch will get you where you need to be. Oh, beautiful. All right, as you can see, we are in diode mode. Let's start off with a standard diode. Here we go. Forward voltage drop, no audible beep over to an LED, starting off with the red, and oh my goodness gracious. Uh, oh, we do have a lit. 1.7 forward voltage drop, good. And same for the yellow over to the green, lit, but no forward voltage drop. The blue, no, nothing. And the white, same. So, interesting. So three to five in terms of illumination, and two to five in terms of displaying that forward voltage drop. Interesting. Oddly enough, you'd think with a 9-volt battery that it would be a little bit better the dial department, but uh, not the case. There you have it, a measly 2.2 volts output voltage in diode mode. Here we go, continuity time. Is it latchy, is it scratchy, is it loud? Who knows, but we shall soon find out. Default test probes, three, two, one. Oh, it's loud and latched. And even with these cheesy cheap leads, it's not bad, not bad at all. Let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters. Oh, it doesn't miss a beat. Awesome. Seventy-one point six decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Not bad. So according to the IKEA manual, I IKEA. <laughs> Keep forgetting it's not an IKEA manual. Anyway, function generator that's built into this little park side, oops, gives out a signal of one kilohertz square wave. Three volts peak to peak, um, output impedance about 10 kilo ohm. So let's see how good that square wave is, shall we? As the manual says, one kilohertz, and look at that square wave, really nicely done. Good job, park side. Here we are in resistance mode. Now remember, this has a uh, maximum of 20 mega ohm. Right now we're sitting in a 100 ohm precision resistor, and that's pretty darn close, 100.8 ohm. Can't get much better than that. Let's just hit that hold, just a basic one touch hold. Let's see if we have any resistance on these leads. Well, actually I got a 
unrelease that. Any resistance on these probe masters? Yes, I'm using probe masters for the precision resistance test and no, so excellent. So that's, that's definitely within spec. Okay, now let's take a look at the decade box. Okay, sitting at one mega ohm, here we go. Three mega ohm, six mega ohm. Oh, it is slow, 10 mega ohm. Yeah, not the fastest out there, that's for sure. Okay, let's try 1.1K. 1.11, 1.111, and finally let's try 200k, 220, 222. Okay, so in the lower range it's not quite as bad, but um, or the higher ranges rather, but uh, yeah, still a little bit laggy. Now, oddly enough, um, I didn't even realize it at first, but this is actually void of capacitance. We cannot measure capacitance on this meter. That's kind of a, uh, a, a big, mm, not a taboo, but that's a big boo-boo. Anyway, I guess they replaced that with the signal generator. I don't know. Probably most people would have preferred to have a capacitance feature as opposed to a signal out. But uh, I don't know. Neither here nor there. I think capacitance is sadly lacking here. Okay, right now we're in high current mode, sitting at 3.4 amps, no problem for the park side. Let's take it up, let's take it up. 5.3 amps, coming up as 5.3. Let's max it out, 10 amps. And look at that, we got a high current alarm. Uh, we don't see any enunciator, but we do have that high current alarm, so good stuff. And that turns off when you go below 10 amps. So, um, hey, cool. Okay, we haven't done this in a while. I'm a little hesitant, but you know what? Let's give it a go the heck with it. I'm gonna take a 250, 500, and 1,000 volts, even though it only has a 300 volt rating. Oh, I must be crazy. Anywho, here we go. Let's start off with 250 volts. Bada boom, bada bing, three, two, one. 255 volts, not a problem. It did that and it did it well. Okay, so, oh gosh, here we go. 500 volts, Whew. three, two, and one. And we have that high current alarm. And is it gonna come back to life? Oh no, oh God, no, really? Oh my, oh my. Oh, it's back, it's back. Whew. Okay, well. <sighs> Can I say 1,000 volts coming up? Here we go. Put on the safety goggles. Three, two, one. That is a thousand volts, and I think we toasted it. Oh God. Let's try 100 volts. 100 volts, oh, looking good, okay, so, hey, we are in business, it survived, survived a thousand volts, oh, I'm surprised. Ooh, I'm happy though, because I like this little meter. And yes, all is good, just making sure I went through all the ranges, 5.01 volts, same as before on the voltage reference, uh, resistance was fine, uh, you name it, the signal generator, so yeah, it did survive that high voltage spike, three times the rating, good stuff, Parkside. Finally, AC volts, not a problem, 122.6. Remember, this is non-true RMS, so it's gonna be a little off, but uh, still well uh, within the spec, looking good. Well, suffice to say, the little beast has surprised me. Um, you know what, it performed really well for a cheapo. Uh, you get a lot of decent performance here. Curious to see what it's gonna look like on the inside. Nice brass threaded insert right there. Look at that. So no matter how many times you take that compartment off for the battery, uh, you're not going to wear things out. Good stuff. Powered by my one 9-volt battery. And we have one of these flimsy little connectors. Not the best method, but uh, yeah. Here we are. Opened and exposed. Um, reverse side of the meter. There's our ABS plastic. Uh, not a bad looking housing, actually. Um, really no ridge or blast protection to be seen here at all. No shielding, of course, but well, we weren't expecting any. All righty then, time to get to the gritty lads. Ah, oh, that was a really bad accent. Starting off with those input jacks. Um, they are the split variety. 
Um, of course, what's what we see 90% of the time in the cheapo zone, but that being said, it's okay. And they also get that retention support on the back from the uh, other side of the housing. So they're in there nice and strong. Um, that's a pretty anemic looking, looking current shunt, I must say, but well, at least it has one. Two fuses here, five by twenties. Uh, we have a high current 300 volt 10 amp fuse as well as a 250 millimeter uh, fuse for the milliamp side. A little bit of flux over here, as you can see, just below that current jack. But generally speaking, it ain't too shabby, not too shabby. One lonely PTC on the voltage side. Uh, small diode clamp. At the top, we have our main speaker slash buzzer. Um, main IC is cobbed, unfortunately. Here we have some factory programmable headers for a factory calibration, what have you. And uh, there is our funky, hunky, nine volt strap hanging off there. Not strap connector. Um, here is the display underneath. We're gonna take it apart a little bit further and see what's on the other side. Remember, we don't have anything fancy, no uh, live wire, no NCV. So uh, just pure basics going on here. So here we are with the reverse side of the PCB. Um, there are the rotary selector tracks and uh, they're not greased either. No Dell electric on there. Um, ooh, ooh, yeah. So I'll probably clean that up before we put it back together. Some flux residue and everything else there. Oh gosh, not good. Uh, clean boards will give you a lot less errors in the long run. Kind of a whole hum job soldering wise as well with those input jacks. I mean, that one's okay, but look at this one. Like nothing's even on there. Nothing went through, so. Uh. Here we have the six rotary pads. That's what makes contact with that selector switch. And if we lift it over, yes, we have balls. Uh, two of them. So uh, good stuff. Nice old school style selector switch. Nothing wrong with that. At the top, of course, we have our soft touch buttons. And above that, we have our zebra strip for the display. And the main display is right here underneath this black encasement. And I guess I'm not gonna pull it off. I don't really see the point, but uh, yeah, there you go. So pretty basic, um, but once again, you know, it looks fairly, fairly good. I'm not complaining here. All right, gonna put it all back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Parkside PDM300C2. What a crazy name. Um, I like it. It's a great little multimeter. Hey, okay, let's face it. It's not a great multimeter, but it's a good multimeter. Um, it's too bad that it has some underlying issues. I mainly talk about the fact that it's lacking capacitance. Oh, why? It's a multi-range, auto-range. Um, it should really have this feature, period. Also, it has no backlight. Would have been a really nice addition. I did find the screen sometimes hard to see. Backlight would have made it so much the better. Side. If you can pick this up at little, for a really good price, hey, I'd say go for it. It's a good deal. Maybe you're just a very casual multimeter user. Um, this is a great first meter for sure. Input protection, not the greatest out there, let's face it, but at the end of the day, home style uh, voltage, it's gonna be just fine. The Parkside PDM300C2 gets a solid three out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.